money, man. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Wednesday? I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. I hope each and every one of you are doing great through these crazy, chaotic, and now lockdown times. If you could please hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that bell notification button so you get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that would be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of all of my videos. So today, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. This is a new era where we talk about different things other than just myself, okay? Now, obviously, we already do that a little bit. We talk about how my situation relates to outside situations. But now we're going to just break it down into... Each penitentiary in Canada, I'm going to go around to each one that is not a minimum. So each medium and maximum security penitentiary. I'm going to do research, find out what information I can about it, put it together with what I know and have heard over the years about that penitentiary. And I'm going to create these videos. And the first one I'm going to do today is this beautiful place, Stony Mountain originally called the Manitoba Penitentiary. Now, when they knocked down Kingston Penitentiary, well, not knocked it down, when they shut it down, ceased from operation, in 2013, Stony Mountain became the oldest operational penitentiary in Canada, the medium part of it anyways, even older than Dorchester, by eight years that's when the land was appropriated or whatever and it was built up and running by 1877 and dorchester was 1880 so they're both old they're both haunted they're both gonna have that dark energy now in stony mountain in 1962 they added a minimum side which was originally called rockwood institution and in 2014, they built a maximum security wing that I think holds about 95 inmates. Now, from what I've heard over the years and the amount of people that I've seen come running to Joyceville and get bounced out that had tattoos all over their face that came running from places like Stony Mountain because they are a truly savage penitentiary. When I'm done with this video, you may agree with me. I honestly genuinely believe that right now, at this point, from what I've learned and researched, Stony Mountain is the most dangerous penitentiary in Canada. There have been five murders in Stony Mountain since 2018. Five murders. There have been multiple stabbings. And to top it off, this story is crazy. So there was an unruly guy, okay? Been separated, put away, maybe in segregation or like a special handling unit because he was probably a little out of control, didn't care at all about authority, and probably was one of those dudes who just swung on coppers if he felt like it. So they had him put on some special wing. Well, this dude decided one day when the Fed was in his cell that he had had enough he lunged at the Fed and it slashed his throat with a shiv. Now, I can't tell you what kind of shiv it was, but I assume it's some kind of a razor blade, some kind of something like that. And this guy got cooked. This officer had to be airlifted out to the hospital where he did survive. He did not pass away. But Stony Mountain has had multiple suicides, multiple murders, multiple overdoses. 
and with 30 to 40 active gangs. From what I'm aware, it has different levels of population. So there, you know, most prisons have general population and PC. From what I hear, there's all kinds of different levels in Stony Mountain because of these gang beefs. Because, you know, these guys might not want to go to this, be separated, but because of the politics and the amount of people that are probably trying to get them, they feel obligated to protect them. So these different zones are created. That That is what I have uh, have interpreted from what people have told me how it is in Stony, And there's just so much gang problems all the time. A lot of the time, if certain gangs see certain gangs, it's on site. Now, if you go to Stony Mountain, it's primarily native and white inmates, but I think primarily native. And from what I hear, a pretty intimidating place. Now, if you see the picture, if you look at the thumbnail, it is one of those old school looking penitentiaries like Kingston Penitentiary built. 18 kilometers from Winnipeg, secluded, out cold, desolate, making it almost impossible, I'm sure, to escape. Stony Mountain, to me, sounds like somewhere you probably don't want to go. And just for those of you who don't know, if you're from northern Ontario, way, 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 way up there, places such as Thunder Bay, you will go to Manitoba. You will not do your time in Ontario. You will go to Manitoba. And if you get sentenced to federal time, you will do your time at Stony Mountain. And at least that's what I'm aware of. You know, I can't sit here and tell you that it's one million percent because I could be wrong. Uh, I, you know, I stand corrected if I am wrong. But from what I understand, that's how it is there. Now, I did time in a fairly old school penitentiary, as you know, Joyceville Penitentiary, which at times was a pretty savage place. But five murders in a population of 500 guys in a two-year period, plus multiple other stabbings, assaults on officers, and probably all kinds of gang brawls. It sounds like conditions there are probably not good. It sounds like there's probably overcrowding. They shut penitentiaries down in our country, such as Kingston Penitentiary and Joyceville Penitentiary, as, max, as populations, and didn't build new penitentiaries. So obviously, they're sticking bigger wings onto other parts of these pens and creating more hostile environments. Now, if you ask me, the Canadian federal system, you're still going to do better time than you probably will in a lot of countries around the world. But prison is prison, and it can be savage. And almost all maximum securities are savage. And I'm telling you, from what I've read, Stony Mountain is that place. It is the big, bad penitentiary out in the middle of nowhere looking like a uh, 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 black dolphin or something from Siberia. Just desolate prairie tundra. And out in the middle of nowhere, there you are in this war zone. And you could go there for anything. You could go there for DUI. You could go there for a bunch of theft unders. You could go there for rape, aggravated murder. They have everything in that penitentiary because it's the only one in the province. I think... Because of all the gangs, the smartest thing for Manitoba to do would probably build another state-of-the-art penitentiary and give these guys an opportunity to be away from their ops so they don't have to do this stuff all the time and they can concentrate on working up here and making a better life for their kids and work on maybe some trades. But when you're in war, you can't concentrate on that stuff. And when you're in a gang, you're obligated to that war. You don't have a choice. 
And I think a lot of the time, the system fails to realize that, you know. You can't put people in an unwinnable situation and expect them to win. If you stack all the odds against these guys, what do you think is going to happen? These guys live a rough life in the street, and then they come in and they live an even more rough life in prison. And it is, it is crazy the difference in the numbers of people that are arrested that are Aboriginal compared to everybody else. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's facts. Obviously, I share my stories with you guys so you guys don't have to go through these things. If I could snap my finger, nobody goes to prison, nobody gets killed in prison, nobody's addicted to drugs, nobody lives a tough life, nobody ex experiences abuse, PTSD, trauma, that's what I would do, but that is not reality. And we're living in 2020, time of the crazy. Now, this is a little bit different, obviously. I'm just kind of giving you a general idea of what each and every penitentiary in this country is like in the last couple of years and what you can expect to, if you go there. If you check, you know, uh, Google and stuff like that, they don't really tell you what's going on. So if you're, if you're on your way in, you can't really get, a, get an idea. So that hopefully my videos will at least give you an idea of what's going on there. And I'm telling you, in my years at Joyceville, we heard a lot of stories about Stony Mountain. It always had a reputation of being a gangster prison. It always had a reputation of a lot of people getting killed, getting stabbed, war on site kind of place. And it's not going to change until there's a better opportunity and there's a reason for these guys to change. You know, uh, you ask, I ask the high ups in the prison system. If you had nothing to get out to, if you had a government that looked down on you, if you had a community that looked down on you, why would you care? Why would you care? And that's how a lot of convicts feel. And I'm sure that's how a lot of people in Stony Mountain feel. At the end of the day, we're all humans. But if you put people into like a human cockfighting ring, what do you think is going to happen? You're basically standing over the fishbowl, trying to put blockades on doors, keeping these guys apart. Mistakes happen. Corrupt guards happen. People are going to die. In Ontario, they figured out a way to separate these gangs for the most part to create a some kind of hormonal situation or a some kind of ordered situation where people could get along and try to do their time. But it seems that there's no option there. You go to this savage place and you try to make it out alive. And you try to make yourself a better person after seeing what you saw here and had to go through what you had to go through. That changes you. When you are in that environment, even for a short period of time, you change because you have to change or you don't go home. I love each and every one of you at the new Matt Clark. Oh yeah. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and that bell notification button so you get all these videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that would be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of all of my videos. Just remember, you lock people in cages and stick a stick through them and poke at them, and expect them to behave a certain way, that's exactly what you're going to get. You know, I don't know if this is a metaphor or what it is, but if you take an orca, a killer whale, and you put that animal in an aquarium, they get aggressive and they kill people. They have never once in the wild killed somebody. Tells you a lot about Locking people in cages. Love each and every one of you. The new Matt Club.